Hello, my name is Stuart Cole and welcome to Adams. This is our library collection auction. It is an auction of paintings, furniture, bronzes, curiosities, suits of armour, effectively over 200 lots of wonderful items that you either didn't know existed or that you didn't know you wanted up until now. You can also log on to our website and view the auction using our 360 degree virtual tour. So please do do that. Um, you, we have live chat on the website or you can telephone us or email us with any of your questions. So please do log on and explore this auction for yourself. I can unfortunately only show you a small number of items that pique my interest, but I'm sure there's something here for absolutely all of you no matter what your tastes are. And I hope I can give you a little flavor of what's involved. We start with this painting here, originally uh, the property of the Whaley family. As you can see, it's Diana at rest, 17th century. The Whaley family, of course, well known for Buck Whaley, the rake. Uh, they had a house just across Stevens Green here, and it's been in this family ever since. I love this pair of small occasional tables, the perfect size beside a chair or a sofa. They have these wonderful tray tops, these carved spiral turned columns, acanthus collars and fabulous triangular base with these heavy paw feet. They could almost run across the room. I absolutely love them. The estimate on these is 800 to 1000 euro. The wonderful thing about auctions like these are the nature of objects that turn up. This is an original club ballot box from the early 19th century. When clubs were electing new members, every member would have an opportunity to vote on the eligibility of the incoming members. Beside this would be a small jar with black and white balls. You would go into the ballot room pick a black or a white ball from the bowl and you'd put it to yes or no, Y or N. And inside there's a small internal divider and you'd take one of these balls, if it was white or black, and you'd pop it to the left or to the right. At the end of voting, the drawers would be opened and if they were full of white balls, you were in. But unfortunately, if they contained black balls, you were out. And that's where the term black balls come from. You were blackballed. A popular term before the use of boycott. Here on my desk, we've got some more typical library objects. This fabulous 19th century desk globe showing the whole known world. This was made by Johnson's in the late 19th century. And of course, this wonderful piece of sculpture on the desk of course, it's not a piece of sculpture. It's actually a nut from a palm tree native to the Seychelles. It's called a coco de mer. Before the discovery of the Seychelles, these would wash up all along the Indian coastline. And of course, because of the obvious nature and shape, there were many, many fertility legends associated with these uh, very unusual nuts. I think it has a wonderful sculptural quality and a real conversation piece, an interesting thing to sit on your desk. A coco de mer nut, the estimate on this is four to 600 euro. Quite a rare object. Of course, what library is complete without a bookcase? And this is a wonderful example of an Irish Georgian bookcase in mahogany. Look at the dental cornice on top. This wonderful figured mahogany, of course, you are going to have to have quite tall ceilings to accommodate this, bearing in mind I'm about six foot two. But estimate on this is about six to eight thousand euro. Beautiful piece of furniture. Look at these wonderful astral glazed doors. And the quality of the brass handles, absolutely superb. Of course, hidden in drawers in every library, well, some libraries around the country. You can find wonderful things like this chart of the Shannon 
from the late 18th century. This when it was survey, surveyed by Murdoch Mackenzie. This is an absolutely wonderful detailed chart of every nook and cranny on the Shannon. Beautiful. And of course, sticking with the chart theme, we have the charts of Carrick Fergus and of the real capital, uh, Cork. This is a wonderful chart of Cork Harbour by Greenville Collins. You can see where Crosshaven would be, Hall Bolan, Spike Island, Cove. Estimate on this would be in the region of four to 500 euro. These are just some of the 26 views of Dublin that Malton engraved in the late 18th century. We have a full set of 26. He published them as a picturesque and descriptive view of Dublin. And they beautifully document both buildings that are still in existence and some like the Thalsal, which are no more. Estimate on the full set of 26 is eight to 10,000 euro. This might be a little bit over the top for COVID protection, but I did promise you a suit of armor and we actually have two. This is one of them. Uh, of course, it's a, it's a decoration more so than anything else, but the estimate is two to 3,000 euro. I love this 17th century table. Inscribed with a date, 1649. Fabulous hunk of timber on top. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful curation. Unfortunately, this is the last lot that I'll have time to show you today, but I hope that I've given you enough of a flavor that you go to www.adams.ie and explore this uh, for yourself. Thank you very much for watching.